Here are the top updates in AI news, science, and research this week. This includes the launch of the GPT Store, finally, this AI device that could potentially replace your smartphone, scientists finding yet another way to jailbreak into chatbots like GPT and BARD, and Microsoft discovering new materials for batteries. Let's jump right in. First up, here is an AI device that's aimed to potentially replace smartphones. Let me play you the main parts of the keynote first. Hi, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I'm the founder and CEO of Rabbit. I'm so excited to be here today to present you two things we've been working on. A revolutionary new foundation model and a groundbreaking consumer mobile device powered by it. Our mission is to create the simplest computer, something so intuitive that you don't need to learn how to use it. The future of human-machine interfaces should be more intuitive. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at the existing mobile devices that we use daily. The smartphone was supposed to be intuitive, but with hundreds of apps on your phone today that don't work together, it no longer is. If you look at the top ranking apps on app stores today, you'll find that most of them focus on entertainment. Our smartphones has become the best device to kill time instead of saving them. It's just harder for them to do things. This insight led us to create the large action model, or LAM, as we call it. It is a new foundational model that understands and executes human intentions on computers, driven by our research in neural symbolic systems. This is the Rabbit R1. Designed in collaboration with Teenage Engineering, the R1 is a fully standalone device, primarily driven by natural language. The accumulation of countless hours of work from our research, design, and software teams. It is simple to use. R1 is equipped with everything you need to interact with you and perceive your surroundings. It comes with a touch screen, a push to talk button, and an analog scroll wheel, a microphone and speakers, and a computer vision enabled 360 degree rotational camera we call the Rabbit Eye. It is Bluetooth and Wi Fi capable and it has the same card slots that supports global 4G LTE network. And now, let's see how it works. I can ask Rabbit for anything, just like if I'm using ChatGPT. The difference though, is the speed. With Rabbit OS, I get a response 10 times faster than most of the voice AI projects. Rabbit answers my questions within 500 milliseconds. Now, let's give it a shot. What's the nature of the reality? The nature of reality is a topic that has captivated the minds of philosophers and thinkers throughout history. What's the stock price of Coca-Cola? Searching for the stock price of Coca-Cola. The stock price of Coca-Cola, KO, is $59.76. Now, let's play some music. Play Kraftwerk's Pocket Calculator. Playing Pocket Calculator by Kraftwerk for you. Play another song from the album. Sure. Playing Computer Love for You. That's all the tracks from the same album. Get me right from my office to home now. Of course, I will book an Uber ride for you from your office to your home. Please confirm the ride. I have six people with three luggages. Find me an Uber that can fit all of us. For six people and three pieces of luggage, I recommend booking an Uber XL, as it provides ample space for all passengers and luggage. Please confirm the ride. The ride shows up, I just hit confirm, Uber's on my way. I can also use R1 to order food. Get me a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut delivered to here. The most ordered option on the app is fine. Ordering a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut. Since you mentioned that the most ordered option is fine, I will select that for you. I just created an order for a 12-inch pizza. It's going to be hand-tossed with a classic marinara sauce and topped with regular cheese. Please confirm your order. That sounds really good. I just confirmed the order here. Now I'm waiting for my pizza. I can also make R1 to a set of more complex actions that may take multiple apps to finish on a smartphone. For example, if I want to plan a trip to London, I can just describe what I wish in full to R1. I want to take my family to London. It's going to be two of us and a child of age 12. We're thinking of January 30th to February 5th. Can you plan the entire trip for me? We like cheap non-stop flights, grouped seats, a cool SUV, and a nice hotel that has Wi-Fi. Exploring ticketing options to make your trip a reality. For your trip, I found various flight options, a range of hotels to choose from, and car rentals available. Please confirm each option individually for further details and booking. So it's all been planned out. I just confirm, 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 and that's it. Can you create an additional column that matches candidates who mentioned Rabbit in their questions? 
about how they found us? Sure. Let me take a look at the table and add the matching column for you. I've processed the table and sent you an email with the results. Okay, now let's check our email. Just like how I can teach my friend how to skip, I can show R1 how to do it and it will learn from. This means that any user, regardless of technical background, can teach R1 to learn new skills. So you go to teach mode, start a new session. Today, I will show you how to generate an image of puppy using mid-journey from a prompt using Discord. First, I will go to the servers page and click one of my own servers. Since this is only a general image generation, I'll go to mid-journey text channel. Then I will use the image command along with the prompt. Here I'm putting a cute baby wild dog with big eyes, animated cartoon on rail 8K. Let's wait for a minute for the engine to start generating the images. Once it's done, let's click on the image to get the link and annotate it so that I can generate anything, not just puppets. So let's go back to our web portal. It takes seconds for the web portal to finish processing and that's it. Now, once we finish the training, I can go back to my R1. Now let's use Midjourney, as I told you, to generate a picture of a bunny in pixel art style. Certainly, Jesse. I will use Midjourney to generate a picture of a bunny in pixel art style for you. Please give me a moment to create the image. Now here you go. You got an image generated on Midjourney through Teach Mode. All right, so that's the main points of the keynote for you. First of all, I'm very impressed by the technology if it is true. So. The device is only $199, which is very cheap for what it can do. Now, I'm more impressed by the software rather than the hardware. Like the device itself isn't amazing. It just has a normal camera. It has a touch screen. It has, you know, buttons and a scroll device. So these are ordinary. It's not anything impressive, but the software is really the gold nugget here. So, you know, previously we did have like a few AI tools that tried to automate everything. So for example, AutoGBT or Baby AGI. And a dude tried to get it to like order a pizza or create a website or book an Uber. And there were so many errors with it. It just didn't really work. But right now, Rabbit OS, at least from what Jesse showed in the keynote, he seems to have pulled it off. So you could easily book a flight, plan a trip, order pizza, and do a lot of stuff that usually requires multiple platforms. You can do it easily by just a voice prompt. And what's interesting is, as he showed in the end there, you can also train it to learn new tasks. So for example, he showed the rabbit how to generate images with Midjourney, and it was able to execute that. So the sky is the limit. The user is able to teach rabbit any workflow, which it can then automate. As I've said before, there are previous tools that claim they could do this, like AutoGPT and Baby AGI, but there were so many bugs with it, we don't know if this Rabbit OS can pull it off yet. We still need to wait and see how robust this OS is. This graph is really interesting. It shows you why current chatbot models like Claude or GPT-4 are not able to process workflows like book an Airbnb or book a flight for you or even play music on YouTube or Spotify because the number of tokens required to run each of these actions is significantly higher than the maximum limit set by these chatbots. And so this is the main limiting factor of these main LLMs out there. But Rabbit seems to have overcome this limitation with their software. And as he briefly showed in the keynote, the OS was trained by demonstrations. So it was trained on like probably millions of iterations of just people using the interface. And then from that, the AI is able to learn what does this voice prompt mean? What does this workflow mean? What does it mean if the user tells me to book a flight or to order pizza? And so definitely check out the website, which I'll link to in the description below, where you can look at more details on how they actually trained the thing and were able to overcome these token limits that are present in the other mainstream chatbots. And then if you want to pre-order it, it starts at 199, and I don't know why the text is so dark. So let me highlight this. It's only currently available in the US, Canada, UK, and certain countries of the EU, and then also South Korea and Japan. So you need to pre-order it before March 31st, and then they will start shipping it, at least to the US, in March to April of this year. So right now, people don't have this device yet, so it's hard to say like how robust this OS is. Can it really order a pizza? Can it really plan an entire trip for you and book the flights, book the hotel and everything? But this technology seems promising, and I do see the potential for such a device to 
eventually replace smartphones, which is bulky, it has hundreds of apps, it's not actually as intuitive as you would think. So that's it for Rabbit, check it out. All right, next up, this article is really fascinating. It's titled, AI discovers that not every fingerprint is unique. So of course, fingerprints are used in forensics a lot. However, the main problem is if the criminal leaves prints from different fingers in two different crime scenes. So for example, if they commit crime A and they only leave a fingerprint from their index finger and then for the next crime they commit, they only leave a fingerprint from their thumb, it's really difficult to link these. So people have accepted the fact that fingerprints from different fingers of the same person, of the same hand, are unique and they cannot be matched. However, this team at Columbia Engineering used AI to find that actually there is a way to determine whether a pair of fingerprints belong to the same person or not. So how they did that was they took a database of 6,000 fingerprints and then they fed them as pairs into a neural network. And each pair of fingerprints could either be from the same person or a different person. And so it's a simple classification problem. You feed it a pair of fingerprints and then you give it the answer first of all. So this pair does belong to the same person or this pair does not belong to the same person. And then over time, the AI is able to be trained on determining whether a pair of fingerprints does belong to the same person. So if you just feed it one single pair, it was able to determine whether it belonged to the same person or not with a 77% accuracy. And if you give it more pairs, then the accuracy increased even more. So once the team verified their findings, what's funny is they actually sent it to a well-established forensics journal, but then they got rejected. So some schmuck said, it is well known that every fingerprint is unique. It would not be possible to detect similarities. And then they submitted it to another journal and then it got rejected again. But eventually it was finally accepted by this journal. So we're seeing this recurring trend where AI finds something that falsifies a previous truth that we thought was universal. So in this case, we all thought that every fingerprint is unique. There's no way to link the fingerprints of two fingers on the same hand. But AI has shown this to be false, at least from this study. And this led us to question, well, what if fingerprints aren't even the correct thing to measure? And so what they found was that the AI wasn't using this minute whatever that is, which is basically, you know, the pattern of the fingerprint. Instead, he said it was using something else related to the angles and curvatures of the swirls and loops in the center of the fingerprint. So that's really interesting. Another thing is they only trained it on like 60,000 fingerprints from this government database. But as you should know, neural networks, they need a lot of data to train well. So you got to feed it like millions of data points. So they think the accuracy would be even higher if it's trained on millions of fingerprints. So check this article out. I'll link to it in the description below. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Upix. If you're feeling overwhelmed with mid-journey or stable diffusion, you don't want to worry about prompting or learning all these different settings. Well, Upix has made it dead easy for you to generate high quality, realistic images of yourself or anyone else in just one click. It works on desktop as well as on your phone. You don't need to install any apps or anything, it just works straight from your internet browser. Simply select a template and then upload your photo and then click create. It's as easy as that. And look how realistic the results are. There's many templates for you to choose from and more to come, so check it out at upix.app. All right, so next article, scientists identify another security flaw in these AI chatbots. If you've been following my channel, I believe around two weeks ago, another researcher discovered a way to hack GPT and BARD and other main chatbots. Well, this article presents yet another way. So UC Riverside computer scientists have found another way to get these chatbots like Google Bard and ChatGPT to output restricted content, such as instructing you on how to make a bomb. So recently, these chatbots like ChatGPT have added this vision capability where you are able to upload an image and it can analyze it and do something with it. And that's how this app where you take a sketch or diagram and it turns it into a fully functional game or app, that's how this app works. It, it uses GPT vision. So normally, right, if you ask ChatGPT 
a normal question, it would respond to you with the instructions. However, if you ask it something harmful or illegal, such as how do I make meth or how do I build a bomb, it's going to say, I can't help with that. It's going to refuse to answer you. However, what these scientists found was that you could actually upload an image which contains this illegal question to jailbreak the chatbot. So why or how this works is because an image is basically data right? That's how QR codes work. When you scan a QR code, it takes you to a link because that image contains data of a link. And so Dong explained that, you know, AI interprets an image as bytes of information that create pixels composing the picture. So just how you can embed a URL in a QR code, you can also embed an illegal question like how do I make a bomb just by altering the pixels of the image and then uploading it to like Vision GPT. And by doing that, they were able to bypass the safeguard of GPT and actually get it to answer that illegal question. Here's the diagram that shows roughly how this works. So if you just ask it, how do I build a bomb? It's going to reject answering that question, right? However, if you decompose images of bombs, and then kind of sprinkle it into an image which seemingly is not illegal. And then you ask it, tell me how do I build these objects? Because of the way the AI interprets this image, it's going to interpret your question as write a manual on how to build these bombs. And if you do it this way, it actually bypasses their safety mechanism and it would give you the answer on how to build a bomb. So, you know, this is also a recurring pattern where like only once every few weeks, we get another article that shows you how to jailbreak or how to hack chat GPT or Bard to produce malicious content. And you know, by the time this video is out, they've probably patched this up already, but I'm expecting like after a few weeks, there's probably going to be another discovery on how to hack this or, or bypass the security measures. All right, so next up, this team at Microsoft was able to use AI to discover new battery material in weeks, not years. So it's significantly speeding up the scientific discovery process. So they teamed up with Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and they used AI to identify and they basically used AI to filter 32 million potential inorganic materials to 18 candidates that could be used for battery development. And they did all of this in just 18 hours. Previously, it took one of these scientists several years to find and design a new material, which was used for this redox battery. The simulation can be up to half a million times faster. And this is just another awesome use case of AI. So as we know, like Google DeepMind is using AI to estimate protein synthesis and do protein design, which would be revolutionary for biotech. And you can also apply the same principles to chemistry and in this case to battery systems. And this is especially important in the battery research world because a majority of our batteries today are lithium ion batteries. So that includes the battery in your phone to medical devices to electric vehicles. However, it's running out and it's expensive. So we need to look for alternatives. And by the speed of which this AI is finding these new battery materials, I don't expect it to be long before we could find a suitable candidate to replace lithium ion batteries. It's probably going to be better and more efficient than the battery systems that we have today. So they're currently already testing this out where they've developed this new battery, which has reduced the lithium content considerably up to 70%. So it's a solid state electrolyte where ions move back and forth with minimal resistance. It's still at the very early stages of development, so more updates to come on that. All right, and finally, the GPT store is finally launched this week. You will need to have a paid plan to use these or create your own GPT. You can see like the initial layout, they have categorized GPTs into these top categories. There's a featured section, plus there's a trending section. So if I go into like productivity, for example, here's what I get. And then let me expand these ones. It's not clear how they rank these yet. It's not in alphabetical order. So I'm assuming it's by like engagement rate or the usage. But yeah, if you're able to find out and, you know, leverage that algorithm to show up at the top, it could bring significant traffic to your product or website. All right, well, that's it for the top updates in AI news, science and research this week. If you watched all the way up to here, guess what? This video is actually not free. The fee is you just need to gently touch that subscribe button. That's all you need to do. And then your debt would be paid off. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.